I'm going to talk about something which is a bit different from, from what Abhishek is, has been talking about. Namely, it's something where we don't understand anything about the dynamics, and so and we understand even less about, about what's happening uh, when, when we do statistics. So it's, uh, I, I, I hope I, I will give you anyway some ideas. So I'm going to talk about, about the relative motion of particles in turbulence. And, and, uh, and basically, this is joint work with uh, Giorgio Kosolovic from the, the observatory in Nice, uh, François Lenin, who is now uh, in industry, and uh, Simon Talabar, who, who is at the University of Nice in physics. So uh, motivations for this work is, is to, to try to grab some ideas about, the, to quantify the fluctuations that one is observing, uh, for instance, in atmospheric transport. So there are a few examples that I'm giving here. So from volcanoes to, 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 uh, to pollution, tra transport of pollution by, 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 uh, by, uh, uh, by the atmosphere, by uh, winds, and, and the, the formation of clouds. So basically, th there is something which is very important, is to be able to quantify fluctuations. And this is particularly important if one is interested in risk assessment. And, and so the thing is that usually, when one is dealing with, uh, with large scale uh, observations or models, which are unable to really tackle what's happening uh, for the fluctuation at very small scales. So, so all of these problems have in common the fact that they are transported by a turbulent flow. So uh, turbulent flow is what they will be considering is uh, an incompressible solution to the Navier-Stokes equation. So which, which is in a steady state, a statistical steady state. So which means that they have some, uh, it's a force, force dissipated Navier-Stokes equation. So with a random forcing, which is injecting kinetic energy and some dissipations, which is occurring at small scales. And of course, this is uh, uh, one of the most famous uh, out of equilibrium system, where basically we know that uh, uh, the, the energy is flowing over the scale. So when we are injecting too much energy compared to the speed at which it's dissipated, basically we obtain what is, is called the turbulent state, where basically the, the energy is flowing from the large scale where it's injected to the small scales where it's dissipated. So the, the thing I, wa I want you to remember from, from this picture is that everything is getting smooth at small scales, so that there is a, a, a scale which is called the Kolmogorov dissipative scales, below which the flow is smooth, is, is, is uh, differentiable, and, and, and uh, has a, a unique time scale. And in between the large scale where we inject in energy and the small scale where it's dissipated, we have what we call the inertial range so in, in, in this inter intermediate asymptotics, where we assume that the energy is flowing, is, is going through a, a, a cascade. So this is, these are the ideas of Kolmogorov in 1941. And in this, uh, for, for velocities in this inertial range, we, what we observe is that they, they have a, a, a behavior such that the increment of velocity is going like the power one third of the separation. So which means that now we are no more smooth. So we have something which, which, which has some kind of scale invariance. And associated to each of these scales, I mean, the, the, we, we can, we can, each of these land scale and velocity scale, there is a, a time scale, which is given by, just by the turnover time at this scale, which itself goes like the power two thirds of, of the scale. Okay, which is just the, the turnover time, so which means the space divide, uh, length, I mean uh, distance divided by velocity. So now, w when we are interested in in in, uh, in, uh, in turbulent transport, basically we are looking coupled to this uh, Navier-Stokes equation, to this velocity field, to the advection diffusion equation, which is uh, written here, where we assume that we have a scalar field, some concentration, temperature, something, so the amount of pollutant we have, which is transported by this velocity field and has no feedback. So we neglect any feedback from, from, from this scalar field to the velocity field. So it's just a passive scalar. And, and so now, if we try to understand somehow what are the landscapes of, of the mixing uh, inside this equation, there is something which is, again, very old from the 50s, which is called the bachelor scale, which is the scale at which uh, below which uh, a, a, the diffusion will start to act. So, okay, so, so if, if we are uh, 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 below this scale, I mean the, the, the dominant term in the, in the advection diffusion equation is the diffusion term, and then everything will diffuse, will get mixed. And so when we are interested in quantifying fluctuations in transport, I mean we want to, to understand exactly how this diffusion is helping to make things smoother and mixed. So now, typically, if we, if we look at applications, uh, uh, 
so in, in atmosphere, atmospheric conditions, typically uh, the, the Kolmogorov scale, so this eta, the scale below which the flow is smooth, is of the order of one millimeter. So that's typically the, the, the scale uh, that we are interested in in, in uh, atmospheric flows. And so now if we try to estimate for some kind of pollutants, so for instance ozone or, or aerosols in air, uh, what will be the corresponding bachelor scale? I mean, we have things which are very small, like uh, of the order of, of a millimeter for, 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 for ozone, or even uh, of the order of one micrometer for aerosols, which means that diffusion is, is useless in this game. That diffusion will just mix things on a very, very small scale. So turbulence will be very important. And, and, and so now, the usual way to, to try to, to, uh, to estimate the effect of, of turbulence is, is just to think, uh, so this time, at, at the concentration field in, in terms of the characteristics to the, to the advection diffusion equation. So we look at uh, solutions to the differential equations given, so to the stochastic differential equations where we have uh, velocities of, of the particle is given by the fluid velocity at the particle position plus some sub diffusion with uh, the proper the proper different coefficient and and now what what what, what we, we know from 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 uh, from uh, typical uh, stochastic equations is that the 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 the, um, the, the advection diffusion equation is nothing but the Kolmogorov equation associated to, to this stochastic equation so now if we make uh, some average with respect to, to initial data, okay. So so we so we we we, we, we assume that that so average uh, condition on initial data with respect to the stochastic noise. So what we get is that we can express at any position and time the concentration field as the average of the initial data along these uh, stochastic equations, which are ending at at at, at a given position. Okay. So now. Uh, 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 clearly, so above uh, this, this, this uh, um, uh, bachelor scale, advection is, is dominating. And what we have uh, to describe what's happening is usually the, the usual uh, uh, Taylor approach to turbulent diffusion. So we can use now the, 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 the equation uh, for, for, for the characteristics in order to write some kind of, kind of a green Kubo formula where we, we obtain that the typical square di displacement, the typical square displacement can, can be uh, written as the, as, the, as the time integral of the velocity correlation along the, the path of, of the tracer. Yes, please. Sorry, what do you U is a solution to Navier-Stokes. It's a prescribed velocity field. Which, which is supposed to be turbulent, which means that it has some 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 uh, uh, scale separation between in the place where energy is injected and the place where it's dissipated. So so now uh, uh, basically the, the 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 one can try to treat uh, uh, to to rewrite this this uh, time integral of the correlation at very long times. Okay, to to, to get the, the 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 leading order. Uh, things at times which are much longer than, than, than any uh, finite correlation time. So assume that there is a finite correlation time. And, and then what we get is, so the, this is the, the usual uh, way to, to get some, some diffusive uh, behavior at large times. And, and what we get is that we, ha we have uh, some effective diffusion uh, acting on, on very, very long time scales. So this means that there is a kind of mean field equation that we can write for, for this theta field, which is just a diffusion equation with this effective diffusivity, which is given by, by the, the, typical, so the typical variance of the velocity and times the, 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 the correlation time, the in integral correlation time of, of, the, of the velocity along paths. So now, this mean field approach is impossible. You can be used to, to, to get the mean concentration. And this is what is done in applications. And, and so here what you see is an example of, 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 of uh, um, uh, 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 some tracers, some, some, some pollutants which, which are emitted from this source and are, which are then transported by a flow and this flow is turbulent and has a mean velocity in, 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 to, toward the right. And what you see as a background color is the solution to this effective diffusion equation 
and, and in, which in principle is describing, so it's, it's, okay, it's what is called the Gaussian plume because it's giving a Gaussian solution, and, and which is in principle uh, useful to get the mean concentration. But now, uh, as you can see from the dots, which are the instantaneous positions of, 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 of particles which are emitted from this source, what you see is that you have very strong deviations from, from this mean. And this is what I, we are willing to, 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 uh, to quantify. And so now what I will discuss is that actually the spatial correlation that we observe in, in the actual density can be related to the relative motion between two particles. Yes? So the diffusion equation will be the, the background. And in principle, this, this is OK to, 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 to get an, an idea of the mean, of the mean concentration average over time of the full average. So if I, if, if I were taking different times of, of this, of this uh, uh, for, for this uh, instantaneous distribution, averaging over, over time or ensembles, etc., basically I, I will get something which is very close to this mean field, indeed. It will be OK. So now, again, so using, using the, 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 the relationship between transport of the scalar field and uh, motion of the characteristics. So basically, what, what I can do is write again, in the same way, the correlations of, of the, the, my scalar field. With this time, I, I can relate them to the initial correlation of, of my, 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 my scalar field at, at time 0, times the transition probability. So basically, if I'm interested in the correlation between x and x plus r, Basically, I have to average over all possible position x0, 1, x0, 2 of two tracers times the transition probability that at time t I have one tracer at x and the other one at x plus r, knowing that initially I had one at x1, 0, and the other one at x2, 0. So it's just the two point transition probability, which is just something which is given by the flow okay. and, and the diffusion, of course. So now, the, 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 the thing is that, uh, uh, so what it means, it means that if you look at time t, basically you have a position x, x plus r, basically you have to average over all possible transports that, 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 that are leading to these two points. So all possible trajectories where the fluctuations are is coming from diffusion. And now, if we assume that we are homogeneous isotropic, basically uh, we, I will not talk about the full vectorial uh, transition probability, but just to the probability that I'm having two particles at a distance r at mt, knowing that initially they were at a distance r0. Okay, so it will simplify a lot the, 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 the other ways. Uh, uh, so how is it a 6 times 2? So it's a 12 dimensional uh, function. So now, uh, uh, and then I can do, of course, the same kind of, 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 of a trick if I'm interested in higher order correlations, looking this time to the n particle. Relative motion. So now, what is known from this approach is that basically scalar mixing, fluctuations, and even the dissipation of, 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 of scalar are fully determined by, by this two point uh, distribution. And this is what, I, what I'm going to, 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 to discuss in turbulent flow. And in particular, so, so the, 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 there is something specific. So this is a snapshot of a numerical simulation of a scalar transported by each of flow. So there is something very specific appearing in, in this transport, is the, 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 the apparition of shocks, so places where the scalar is, is varying very abruptly on a very small scale, so which means that it's corresponding to, to, to almost infinite gradients. And these very large gradients are the place where, where the scalar is, is, is dissipating okay, a lot, where diffusion is acting a lot, if you want. So, so, so basically, all these fronts, as you see, they correspond to having two trajectories coming from very different locations coming together in a finite time, almost together. Okay? So again, fully related to the properties of this uh, two-point uh, transition probability. Is there, is there a problem with the 
it depends on your conditioning, actually. Uh, I will talk, uh, it's next slide, more or less. <laughs> so, so basically, now, so now assume that we are interested in, in, in the relative separation between two particles, each of them being just a solution to the, of the characteristic to the, to the velocity field given by Navier-Stokes. And, and now, basically, depending on the initial separation and the time at which, so initial separation, it means that we are conditioning on something at time zero, which is this initial separation. And then we observe the separation at time t. And depending on these two parameters, we have different regimes. Okay. So the first one, which is the easiest to understand, is that if you fix some given initial separation, so each particle has a velocity. So initially, they would just go a ballistic motion. Okay, so because they have a velocity, this velocity has a finite correlation time. So they, they will just move, keeping their velocity. So they will just separate ballistically. And this is this yellow region. The second thing that you can understand easily is, is what's happening when, when, when you make the two particles infinitesimally close to each other at scales where, where the free velocity is differentiable. In that case, basically, you can linearize the, the separation between the two particles. And what you get is that they separate exponentially fast with the Lyapunov exponent, which is given by the Lyapunov exponent of, 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 the, of the tangent system to the, to the linearized dynamics, I mean, to the, to the equation of characteristics. Then the thing I talked about was the diffusive regime. So the, this exponential separation is the blue thing here. The thing I talked about is the diffusive regime. So when you are looking at timescales which are much longer than any timescale in your flow, then, of course, things are diffusing. So it's basically, it's this uh, diffusive regime there. And then I will be more interested in, in, in another regime, which is in between here, which is the so-called explosive regime, where typically the, 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 the average square distance between particles is growing in a, in a super diffusive manner. And actually, like the power three of, of, of time, with a constant a coefficient here, which is independent of the, the initial separation. So that's why it's explosive. It, but diffusion is also explosive. So basically, if you have two diffusing particles, they separate in, in a manner which is independent of the initial separation. But now, so you can make them at the same location, and they will separate. So now, the, of course, the ballistic regime and the exponential regime, they depend. They have a dependence on the initial separation. And this regime, this uh, so-called explosive regime, is independent of this of this thing. So how to understand this stuff is that basically, as I told you, uh, w when we look at scales inside the inertial range of turbulence, the, the velocity field is losing its, its, its uh, differentiability. And it's actually, it's, it's only Holder uh, um, continuous with a Holder exponent, which is of the order of one third. So as you remember that uh, velocity uh, increments in, in turbulence, they go like separation to the power one third. So which means that if you look at this equation with such, such a, a, a non-differentiability, basically you're, you're, losing, you're losing uniqueness of the solutions. So, so just assume that, for instance, that you are looking at an equation like dx dt is, x, is square root of x, or x to the one third. Basically, you, you have two solutions, one which is x equal to 0 at any time, and the other one which is x going like a power of time with the, the proper power. So this is the, so basically we are losing uniqueness. And, and so this uh, loss of uniqueness has been coined uh, spontaneous stochasticity because of the following things. So now assume that in this equation, I'm adding some, 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 some uh, either uh, some way to regularize the velocity field. So I make it smooth at most case, okay? So which would be corresponding to take a finite value of, of, of a given parameter new, which is my, my, uh, my regularization parameter. And, and now I can now construct fully the, 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 the transition probability for, for, for my, my flow defined by my characteristics. And so what is spontaneous stochasticity? It corresponds to taking the limit when this regularization parameter is going to zero, and then the limit when the initial separation between the particles is going to zero. And then the, the, to look at the behavior of this transition probability. And what's happening is that this transition probability is not going to a delta function. OK, so this is the probabilistic way to understand non-uniqueness. So uniqueness would be just for a given R0, 
I mean, uh, I, I will get, so of course it should be vectorial this time, I, I will get a unique solution. So a unique R times T. So which will mean that, that, that basically my, my, my transition probability will go to a delta function. And, and so now, even if, if, if we don't have any source of noise, the only fact, the, the only idea of having something which is non lipschitz and, and giving something non-unique is, 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 uh, is, is implying that we, we always have a signature of, of, this, uh, of, this, uh, of any way we had to, to, to regularize the, 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 the problem and always uh, something which is becoming spontaneously stochastic. Okay, where particles we separate even if there is no noise. So what does it mean? It means that, so uh, as I was telling you, it means that you have this explosive separation that basically uh, it's, so it, it's known, this is known for a long time in, in turbulence. And, and so it's called the Richardson law or Richardson Obuchov, and, and which is telling you that the, the, the typical, I mean, the average square distance is going like the cube power of, 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 the, of time with uh, some dimensional parameter epsilon, which is the energy dissipation rate of your turbulent flow, because it's just dimensional uh, uh, way to, to non-dimensionalize this, and a constant g, which is supposed to be universal, which doesn't depend on the kind of flow you're considering, neither on the Reynolds number. And this occurs for times which are much bigger than the typical uh, turnover time, typical time scale associated to the initial separation between the particles. So what does it mean also to have something which is, which is explosive this way? It means that mixing is infinitely more efficient than in a chaotic flow. Okay. Turbulent mixing, because of that, basically you, you, can, you can bring things far apart, put them together, okay? and, and, and which means that, that you, you don't need the time which is given by the Lyapunov exponents you know, in order to mix things. I mean, it can take just a, a time one independently of, of, of the initials, uh, of, of the, the kind of gradient you're, you're expecting or the initial data that you have. So now that there is a difficulty with this law is that it's hardly observed neither numerically nor experimentally. And this is mainly because uh, it's requiring a very large time scale separation. So the kind of time scale separation is, so you need this time associated to the initial separation to be large enough, so basically to, to have a turbulent behavior, so to be larger than the small scale, the small time scale you have in your flow. Then you need to observe the separation at, at a time much bigger than this uh, uh, time associated to the initial data, to the initial separation. And this time of observation has to be much smaller than the large scale time, otherwise you, you have just pure diffusion. Okay, so it's uh, intermediate asymptotics, which, which, is, which has a lot of constraints. So for that, in order to, 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 to look at things a bit further, so th this is typically what you get with, uh, with uh, uh, not too, too cheap uh, uh, direct numerical simulations. So, so basically, it's uh, direct numerical simulations of the forced uh, Navier-Stokes equation, uh, incompressible Navier-Stokes equation, using uh, 4,000 cube uh, uh, collocation points. And, and these are typical measurements of the square separation between particles as a function of time. So it's rescaled in a way that you observe that the ballistic regime is, is collapsing independently of the initial uh, separation. And, uh, and that at the same time, things are, are going to the explosive uh, Richardson regime, uh, again collapsed on the same curve, on the same master curve. And, and so what you see is that so you can trust it a bit or not. What you see is that you, you barely observe a decade of, of T-cube scaling and only for very specific initial uh, conditions, which are, which are initial separations, which are a bit close to the, to the dissipative scale. So now, uh, uh, basically, the, the, so there are ways to try to quantify uh, further, I mean, this, this behavior. So now we know that R squared is going like T cubed. And, and so basically, uh, the, the, the old ideas of uh, Richardson, so which dates, uh, which has almost 100 years old, uh, which was almost 100 years ago, uh, uh, basically is to assume that the velocity difference are uncorrelated. Okay, so, so 
and basically, then you say, if that's the case, you just say that the separation is diffusing, so you can write a Fokker-Planck equation for, for the, the transition probability. And this Fokker-Planck equation is, is uh, something of this kind where the diffusion operator, which is here, de depends on the scale. Okay, so it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's like, like, like the Fokker-Planck equation for, for multiplicative noise. And, and, and the way it's depending is just given by a dimensional analysis. So you want to, con to construct a, a, a diffusion operator which depends only on the scale and on your turbulent property, which is the dissipation rate. So, so you, the only way you can write it is like the power one third of, of, of the dissipation rate times the power four third of the separation. And once you are assuming that it has this uh, safe similar shape, then you can, you, you can, you can write everything and, and show that uh, at, at very long time, your, your, uh, your two-point separation will take this scaling form. So something where, where uh, basically, it's, it's, uh, there is a power, uh, the proper power, and an exponential of, of, of the, the scaling uh, um, <laughs> variable. And of, of course, you also obtain that the, 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 the variance of the distance is going like t cubed in this case. So now, this kind of approach has been formalized only in one case, which is the case where we indeed assume that the velocities are uncorrelated, which is called the Kraken model, which was uh, basically uh, uh, introduced by Kraken, uh, studied a lot by uh, Gavinsky, Vergasola, and many others. Uh, uh, during the, 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 the late 90s. And, and, so, and so in that case, of course, what you assume is that the velocity field is not a solution to the Navier-Stokes, but it's a prescribed random velocity field, which is Gaussian, white noise in time, and with specific uh, uh, correlation in space, which, are, which, is, which, which is a power law. And then, if you assume that, you can show exactly that, 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 that what you get is indeed a diffusion equation. I mean, of course, you have put all the ingredients, so it's, a, it's, a, it's not very complicated. And that, basically, you, you get a, the, the, the right uh, uh, scaling form for, for the, the two-point distribution. Now, the, the, if, if we now try to think about what's happening in an actual turbulent flow, I mean, there is a clear shortcoming, is that, uh, basically, actually, the velocity difference that, that, that we have at a given time t has a typical time scale which is of the order of t. Okay. So typically you, you, you can see it this way. So I, I told you that the typical time scale at a given scale r is like going like r to the two thirds. If in addition you assume that r square is going like t cube, then it's clear that the correlation time of the, of the flow that you have at a given time t is of the order of t. Okay, so which means that there is no way you can, you can get some asymptotic uh, um, argument to, 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 to say that you have diffusion of distances. <laughs> Sorry. So now, uh, and in addition, so now if you do some measurements, so, so these are measurements of, of the, of the two-point probability, transi the transition probability, for di different values, um, I think I lost. Uh, it's weak, it's here. So for different values of, of, the, of the initial separation. And so basically it's represented in such a way that if things were exactly obeying the, the, the Richardson scaling form, it would be just the dashed line which is shown here. And, and, and what you see is that you have clear deviations. In particular, you have broader tail at, at small distances, which means that there is some kind of trapping occurring uh, at small distances. And then you have a clear dependence on, on the initial separation at large distances, which means that uh, things which are, which are uh, so that there is some kind of memory effect, that if you have started from, from, from a large distance, you're more likely to, 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 to go to a, a larger distance, even if it's a, just a relative distance, than if you were starting uh, from, from, uh, from smaller distances. But at the same time, I mean, this is the typical way people are representing things, but I mean, it's, it's, people are cheating a bit because you see that by using this rescaling, actually you're pinching all the data here and there, so which means that you, uh, you pinch them and, 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 and then you, you try to pinch them at two points and try to make them look like a line, so it's not, uh, it's not very fair. But still we see, we see deviations. 
So now the, the, there has been other uh, uh, ways to try to tackle these deviations, so which were based on, on, on uh, assuming again that the, the separation is Markovian. But this time, it's not the velocity which is diffusing, but the time derivative of the velocity. So you go to next order. So what you assume is that now the time derivative of velocity is some kind of, so in principle, it's the acceleration. Of the, so the difference of uh, acceleration in two points in the fluid. And what you assume is that uh, this acceleration is, is, is correlated on small time scales because you have small eddies which are making things going right, left, etc. And that you can assume that you, you can replace this uh, model, this acceleration by a white noise by uh, using some kind of uh, central limit theorem. And so now what you get is a coupled equation for the separation which involves the velocity difference and the velocity difference which is now a, diffu a diffusive process. And from then you can write a focal planck equation this time for the joint probability transition between separation and velocity. Okay, which is like that. And then you have to, 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 uh, to assume something in order to close your system. So this is going more and more like engineering modeling. And, and the, way, the way people are, are, are doing this thing is they, they put this so-called well-mixing uh, um, uh, condition, which, me, which is the following, is that now if you assume that this, this is supposed to describe something for, for your flow, you, you can uh, take solutions to these focal Planck equations which are assuming that the initial distribution is uniform. So as it's uniform, it's incompressible, so things are staying uniform. And now, if you, if you, if you, if you, make an, an, if you look at velocity statistics with this uh, distribution which is uniform in space, basically you should recover the usual velocity statistics of your turbulent flow. Okay, so this is the way pe people are, are, are giving constraints on, on these models. So there are many limits to this, to this uh, Markov modeling. So basically, the first thing is that actually acceleration is not really short, sh short time correlated. And in particular, uh, so it's OK for the components, because typically uh, uh, so some free particle, when in the flow, will, will turn a lot. So it will be in, in an eddy, so it will turn a lot. So basically, components are get, getting uncorrelated very fast. But if you look at the amplitude of the, of the acceleration, I mean, in, 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 I mean uh, what you observe is that it's a long-range correlated process, this amplitude of acceleration. The, the, the second thing is that, is that uh, 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 basically, the, 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 the most models, uh, they, they, have, they, they, are, they are leading asymptotically, all of these models, they are leading asymptotically to Richardson diffusion. But what we know is that Richardson diffusion is not I mean, the, the, the distribution of, of uh, the, transi the transition, the transi uh, the transition density distribution is not is not uh, described by Richardson. So this is a, uh, a problem. And then th the other thing is that uh, there are many other observations wh which are telling you that you have, you have some memory effects, and that things like like uh, uh, Levy walks or, or th uh, waiting time approaches are, are giving some better estimates of of, of the of, the, of the, the, the relative separation. So basically, I, I will try to talk quickly about uh, another type of scenario, so which is where basically we are breaking Markovianity, so where we assume something with non-Markovian. And this scenario is, is, uh, consists in considering that the, the pair of particles in the turbulent flow is going a sequence of independent ballistic separations. So the model is very simple. So we assume that the separation is, 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 is given at, at, at time n plus 1 is given by the initial separation plus delta t times some velocity difference at time n. So it's just a, a, this is one piece of, of, uh, of the ballistic motion. But then the, the time it takes to the next time step is, is also a random variable at each, time, at each step. So it's, it's in, in the framework of the continuous time random walks. So basically, what we assume is that, the, 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 of course, the time step, the velocity steps, and the time steps are dependent on the separation, on the given separation. Okay, we will plug the turbulent scaling that, that we know, turbulent statistics. And what we also assume is that the delta u's, I mean, the, and the delta n's are independent from each other. When, 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 so be, which will mean that in the r n t n space, this will be just a random walk. 
But then it's when we want to reconstruct the actual time. So we need to sum up, to, 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 to condition MTN, that we will lose Markovianity. So this is a usual trick uh, to, 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 uh, to deal with some easy non-Markovian system. Perfect. So now the, the thing is that, so we search such a formulation. So basically, what we assume is that the, 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 the velocity step is so something like the power one third of, 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 the, of the, 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 the special step, that the time step is like the power two thirds of these things. And now what, what, what we assume is that, is that these are things which are really, uh, these, these power laws are just the way uh, things are depending on, on, on the separation, and then we just multiply that, th these values by a fluctuating uh, Gaussian uh, uh, unit variance random number. So the, 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 the first remark is that uh, assuming that we have something of this kind, so, so which is the case here, means that actually it's, it's not really powers of R which are relevant, but it's more, more the logarithms of R. Because we, we, you can see that if you, if you write, so, so with this uh, uh, formulation together with delta U and delta T being like that, you see that delta U times delta T will be just power one of R, okay? And, 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 and so which means that you can write the, the evolution for R in this way, and so which means that at the end you just have a multiplicative process for R, so that you can write the log of R as a, maybe a sum of independent variables. Actually, a sum of independent variables if you assume that they are independent, and which means that it will grow like n. Okay, so it's more the log of separation which is diffusing rather than the, some separation to some power. The second point is that you, you can easily see from here that again, assuming this kind of, of, of scaling for, for delta t, that you can write time t after n step as an exponential of, of, of something times n, okay? So which means now that n, you see, is log of time from that. So which means that log of r will grow like log of time, which is the, the, the thing we want for, for power laws. And so putting all the power together, actually, you get that the log of, 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 the, of the, the ratio between uh, separation and initial separation is 3 half log of t by t0, so which is the same, uh, the same scaling as saying that r square is going like t cube. So now uh, we have tried to, 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 to understand whether this log of separation is indeed a self-averaging quantity, so uh, it's, going to, uh, it's following this, this uh, central limit theorem if there is a, 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 or not, or, or, and if there are large deviations. So what is shown here is, again, uh, data from numerical simulations. So this time it's a bit different because, I'm sorry, the, no, no, it's okay. So here what is shown is, so what I call rho is the log of the, the, the separation in distance. And what, is, what you sh see here is the average rho, I mean, these are the, the, the field symbol here uh, as a function of log of time. And this dashed line here will be the, the, the t to the 3 half uh, scaling. And, and, and the second thing is the standard deviation of, of this row. And what you see is that the standard deviation as a function of time is going to saturate at some point. So having the, the mean growing and the, the standard deviation saturating is something which is in, in the line of Low, of, low of large, large numbers and central limit theorem. Because the, the standard deviation is, is rescaled the proper way. And so now, uh, uh, so now we, can, we can understand better, uh, we can try to understand better this, 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 uh, this model. So we, 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 do, uh, we, we rewrite it in, in the following manner with alpha n and beta n's being some, some random numbers. Okay. So you remember it's a multiplicative thing for R. With, with some numbers, and these numbers are not, indep not independent from what's happening for time. And, and so now, uh, basically, there is a specific change of variable where we remove the mean of log of r that allows us to, 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 to write a single equation for, for this, uh, this uh, gamma n. And basically, uh, uh, the, the thing is that this new variable gamma n is becoming a stationary variable. So we are able to show that in this model. And in particular, the, 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 the process of, of, of doing it 
is that we can see it from this uh, gamma n dynamics. Uh, basically, gamma n as a function of step is, is, is uh, fluctuating this way. And its dy dynamics is such that it's bounded. So th there, I there is a, a, a gamma n equal to 0 is forbidden. So it's never uh, going to gamma n equal to 0. So gamma n are always staying negative. And then when your gamma n is very large, there is a, 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 a drift acting with a positive slope, which is becoming larger and larger, which push you back the gamma ends inside, inside this thing. So this is the mechanism which is making the, 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 the distribution of gamma ends stationary. Yes, alpha, beta, and random variables. You, so beta is positive, but alpha is is, uh, is not. Yes. So beta is positive because alpha is, is somehow is how much uh, 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 how big is the component in, in in the separation of between trajectories. I mean the longitudinal component compared to the full norm of, of the velocity difference. So this is the alpha. So the parallel is means that it's delta u projected on r. And, and beta n is, is, is uh, uh, delta u cubed by r, so in, and it's something which is always, which is, uh, I mean, in its modulus of delta u cubed by r, and something which is always positive. So, and, and for this specific case, I think we, it's, it's, it corresponds to alpha n uh, uniformly distributed between minus 1 and 1, and beta between 0 and 1. And they are bounded. We assume bound. Uh, I think that the, uh, so alpha is clearly bounded because it's between minus one and one, but we assume beta bounded, but it's, it doesn't matter much. So anyway, so th through through this this uh, this um, this approach, basically we indeed obtain that the the, the mean uh, separation is is going like like uh, three half of of the log of time plus some constant. That, that is just the mean of this uh, reduced variable gamma. And this constant is important because it's the, the thing which is giving the, the constant in the power law for the separation of distances. Then that the variance is a constant, and that the PDF is, is some function only of this rho minus. So now, uh, uh, back to the PDF, and I will finish on that. So basically, the, so, so now that, the, 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 that we propose this other scenario, which is, uh, which is a scenario on, on which, which is the, uh, telling us that it's the distribution of log of r, which is important, and not the distribution of r squared divided by t cubed. Basically, uh, uh, w w what we have done is, is, to, is to now uh, show the distribution of separations between, between tracers. This time, in terms of the log variable, instead of, of, of uh, taking some r to some power, etc. And, and so, what you see now is that uh, for the, the data corresponding to different initial separation, collapse better on the top of each other. So, of course, there, there are some deviations in the tails there and there. So, Richardson uh, uh, diffusion scenario, I mean, the, the distribution coming from Richardson diffusion is the, the, the dashed line here. Which, which is uh, uh, now again a single curve in this uh, rescale variable, but uh, now, now it's clearer that, that, that one observes deviations both at small separation and large separations. And uh, finally, uh, what, what you observe is that for given values of, the param of parameters in our model, we are able to obtain something which is well reproducing the, the, the master curve on which uh, actual data is collapsing. But we have no, no way to, to explain uh, how to choose these parameters. And I will stop here. Thanks.